We are now joined by the great Spencer Tillman, Fox Sports. I worked with him at Inside the Game at ABC 13 for the last almost decade. Spencer, what's going on, my friend? I don't mean to brag, but I'm doing pretty good for it, old man. I do apologize, man. I was out of pocket, so I thought the call came in late, but uh, I didn't see the link. So, anyway, any rate, don't want to do backstory for your viewers, your listeners and viewers out there. So, but anyway, good to hear your voice. I uh, love you, man, and I appreciate you and continue success. It's just great to see you navigate all of the turns and machinations of your career and in personal life, too. It's just been such a blessing to be a part of that, man, in some small way. So thank you for being who you are, dude. You're the well, best, man. Spencer, you're a dear friend of mine. You know that uh, the last, uh, what, 15 years I have come to you with career advice throughout the years uh, and, and fatherly advice and just how to manage schedules. So I want people to know how great of the guy you see on TV is the same guy in person, just uh, the one of the best out there. Spencer, we, we've talked a little bit about where the Aggies live in this uh, new college football landscape. Uh, and, and then the question that Billy Lucci posed to, to people is, does, does Texas need A&M on their schedule? Because the Ags, uh, I don't think they need Texas on their schedule, but does maybe Texas need them? Uh, right now, I mean, if, you, if you're doing the aggregate the last 10 years, you're going to have to say that Texas is in a much more desperate situation. But a lot of times we're the last to see or the person that's really in need of some help is the last to recognize that they've sunk so low. And again, I'm not, not doing this for the audience or anything like that. The bottom line is this, I'm an analyst. I say what I see. And, and I, I look at Texas right now. I look at, you know, particularly the inflection point for me, probably started before then, but it was when, when Mac Brown left his last year, there was zero. Zero players recruited or drafted from that, that recruiting class that he had, which was supposed to be the best one. That was his calling card. And you can see it. You look at some, you know, his quarterback that he has right now. That's what saved him at North Carolina. He was always known for his recruiting, even because he was my recruiter, my uh, uh, offensive coordinator at Oklahoma back in the day. And we used to always joke that Mac could convince a shark that the desert, desert is the best place for him to be. He was so good at it. And for that to happen, there had to be some other fundamental reason for why Texas was not getting players. And the, the, the final thing to see is, well, the judgment is you didn't have any players drafted that last year. That was incredible to me. And that was the inflection point. But like always, those things start long before you get to that point. We just see the clear evidence of that situation. So to answer your question, I would think that uh, you know Texas A&M is in a much better position, in my opinion, because of its leadership than Texas is right now. Spencer, do you see A&M as a uh, national championship contender over these next three years? Do you think they're one of the four or five schools that people are, are thinking that could do this? Well, I think so. I think it begins with leadership. You've always had resources. I mean, they've got great facilities, all of that. Jimbo's an unbelievable you know, coach. Uh, he's had a reputation, a strong one, as a quarterback whisperer before he got there, and then nothing's really going to change. He's going to make the best out of whatever he has available to him. So I think that, combined with the tradition, uh, you know, kind of rekindling that whole you know, wrecking crew kind of defensive mindset, I think if that continues to improve, I think they're going to be fine. This is a spread error. It's a little bit different. You have to judge defenses a little bit different than you did. Um, you know, when I was playing the game, we played the game in a phone booth. It was physical. It was tough. But now it's about spreading people out. So you have to be able to cover folks. And to give up 300 yards passing is not a bad day anymore. So if you can get used to that, and, and I think most people have acclimated themselves to that now, I think they're going to be fine. So I think Texas A&M, has just as much strong chance as anybody being successful on the national stage. Of those that are in that, that I'm going to call it a second tier, it's just below those elites, the, 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 the Clemsons and the Alabamas of the last few years. Ohio State is, is not even there, in my opinion. I think that there are two teams, Clemson and Alabama, that are up there at the league, and then right underneath that, you've got this group of about 20 teams that could be there. And I think A&M is in that group. I think they're right there. So um, I think they're in a good place. Spencer Tillman, Fox College football analyst, ABC 13's inside the game covering the Texans. Spencer, uh, this NIL thing, I'm still trying to make sense of it. How, how do you think it's going to shake out? Because what we see right now, I don't think will be how it looks six months from now, a year from now. How the overall season is going to shake out? Oh, just, just like, I mean, I feel like they went into this, Spencer, without a real plan. It's just kind of like the Wild West. And eventually there's going to put some guardrails out there. Yeah, I, I think um, overall the season is going to be interesting. And the only reference point that we have is like what happened back in 1918. That's before you or I were ever born. 
but that was when we had the last pandemic. And, you know, it was, it was ironic. I happened to serve on the board at Methodist Hospital here in Houston. And, and it was, that was the pandemic that really established um, Methodist Hospital. It was created out of that deal. So you go back and you look through the archives there, there's so much information on what was taking place, and sport is prominent in that. And I, there is so much that you see happening now, the uncertainty of the following year, in 1918 and then versus 1917, you had some people that didn't play. You had some people who played half season. Boy, that sounds familiar, right? You had some uh, the following year, you had some people that came back full board, some other people that were a little bit more measured in their approach. I think that they're going to be, we'll see on Labor Day. You know, there's some big scheduled games, and I think the crowds that are going to be part of those Labor Day uh, contests are going to be exciting to watch. That will set the tone. Now, obviously, at any point in time, you know, as you refer to it, the guardrails could come off. You can get an outbreak or something like that. But I think because of so many people that are inoculated, so many people that are in a good place right now, you got about 68% of those that are eligible to be uh, that are. And that, that number may creep up a little bit, and that's a good thing. I think those people who would go to an open-air stadium where you've got people around them, most of them would be inoculated and uh, you know vaccinated. And I think we're going to be in a good place. I think here's the deal. If we could survive what we survived last year, David, there's nothing that's going to stop college football from being played. That's the good news. And I had to tell our folks, fine friends at both Fox, that you know, many, many times we would make our Zoom calls on Thursdays uh, when we weren't playing and when we were in that kind of summer period, pretty much where we are right now. People were speculating what we were going to do, what we're not going to do. Here's what I know. Having been the number one guy at CBS for those 20 years on that desk with Tim Brando and covering the SEC, football is so significant, so important, and not to even get to the part about the money part of it, it is woven into the fiber of who we are, the ethos of this nation. There's no way that you're not going to have it. And that may be an indictment on who we are as people, that we would put ourselves at risk. But the bottom line is, if there ever is a sport that is Teflon, it's football. We're going to play, and there are going to be a lot more people in the stadiums. Uh, if we can make it to the wire, I would bet that we would. All right, that is Spencer Tillman, Fox College uh, football analyst. Thank you so much, Spencer. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, man. Good day. Take care. You too. Spencer Tillman. All right.